Here we are. Hello. Welcome to Yummy In. Let's get started. If you have questions about the practice, um, because the group is rather large, I invite you to put them in the chat box. And if you want to interact about your question, I usually stay on a few minutes after class and we can chat then. Or if you want to message me privately in the chat, um, put your email address and I'm happy to get back in touch with you and, uh, and, and talk about Yen. I could talk about Yen all the time, all day long. But we're going to begin on our back tonight. So I invite you to keep the knees bent and just lay your back flat on the earth. Keep the knees up over the ankles or play around with different angling of the knee by sliding the feet further or closer to you. And then take your hands, rub them together just a, a little bit and place them somewhere where you feel the breath typically present or moving it within your body. Maybe your lower abs or your navel or your solar plexus or maybe up into your rib cage or your chest. And at the same time as you feel your body grounding into the earth, so you feel the back body melting, the feet rooted down. Also sense the way your hands create pressure wherever you've put them. Almost like a weighted blanket, just drawing you down toward the earth. Feeling your presence here in this moment. Try to relax the arms so that they're not stiff. Let the elbows drape by your sides. If it's comfortable to close your eyes, do so. And feel yourself arriving into this experience. Gabrielle Harris, who writes a beautiful book called The Language of Yin, says, to be born into this existence is to be blessed with the animation of breath. So how do you feel the breath animated in your body? Take a few moments to get in touch with that. As you inhale, inhale for peace. As you exhale, exhale to let go of tension. On the next inhale, as you inhale, inhale for wellness. And exhale to release tightness or resistance in your body. Inhale for equanimity. And exhale from the core of your being. Inhale for patience and exhale without rush. Let it be a slow, intentional release. Inhale and dwell in transition. And exhale so that you can begin again.
Slide both hands up to stack upon your heart. Check in with your yin tension. You know, we yinsters love our little plays on words. What is your yin tension for the practice tonight? What will guide and inspire you? What will create the framework for your attention and your energy in our practice? Where will you send the breath tonight? Take a big breath in. Let the breath go. Yeah, once more, big breath in through the nose. And let it all go. And seal the lips and just invite the breath to come and go during tonight's practice. There is, I'm not going to be offering any specific breath prescription other than that you give attention to the breath and create the breath experience any way you need it to be as we hold these shapes. So you may encounter a shape in your body that is just lovely and luscious and wonderful and you know the breathing is easy and free you may come into another shape that is really challenging really difficult for for a physical reason or maybe it unleashes an emotion that you haven't confronted in a while and that may change the breath experience and so just remember just like you are in control of your thoughts where you send attention you're also control of your breath when you want to be. You can use it to help to heal and to ease a challenging moment. All right, bring your hands down by your side and let the knees start to tick tock a little bit from side to side. Just a really slow windshield wipering, checking in with how this feels in your hips, how this feels in your back. And then invite both knees to drift over to the right side. It's okay if they hang. It's okay also to slide your heels away from you a little bit so the knees come closer down to the earth. And it's always okay to use your, your supportive props to place underneath your body to connect you to the earth. So just check in, notice if there's something you wanna do with your blanket, maybe slide it under the knee, one knee or the other. You also have the option here with those knees off to the right to lift your uh, right leg and place your right ankle over the left knee. That brings a little bit more pull into the left hip flexor. So if it's too much, then don't do it. <laughs> but remember, we're trying to arrive at sensation. It doesn't have to be, be the deepest, just we want to arrive where we feel something, something different than nothing. If you'd like here, lift your arms up to the sky, maybe clasp opposite elbows, and we're gonna slide the elbows over to the left side a little bit to bring an opening to the right side. So your knees are off to the right, your elbows are off to the left, and just let us have a feel. We hold shapes for time in our yin practice, which gives the muscles a break. We don't want the muscles to engage because they're very protective of the joints and the tendons and the ligaments. That's how we stay safe from moment to moment when we're standing and running and jumping. Thank you, muscles. But in yin, we want the muscles to, to relax that we can actually speak to those deeper layers of tissues that are normally very well protected. So check in with your breath. Remember to use each inhale to draw in something that you need or want. Use the, in, the exhale to release or to rinse or to cleanse in a way that you feel better served, lightening your load, so to speak.
I will keep the time for you. I normally give you a three breath countdown when we're getting close to the end of holding a shape in a particular way. That frees you up to have these little moments of meditation, a mindful presence to just notice what arises, what's here now. If you notice any tingling or pinching sensations in your neck, your arms, your fingers, then let your arms come down by your side. Take three more breaths here. Um, they're separated because we came into this from that windshield wiper. But what we're going to do now is slide that left knee to stack over the right knee, turning this into a spinal twist. So extend your arms out to the side, finding your way into like either goalpost arms or them be like a T. And you can draw your knees up or you can draw them down the mat. And it's okay if your left shoulder comes off the mat a little bit, but we're looking to find rotation in the spine. You should feel the twist, particularly in your lumbar spine. That's what we're after here. You can even slide your left knee a little bit closer up towards your, your face and um, use your right hand as a little weight on that knee, intensifying the sensation. But there's no need to be intense today. Feeling something is, is enough. Check in with all the little muscles that support your hips. Just make sure they're relaxed. Soft. Taking a break. The work that we're trying to do in these, these deep tissues, the fossil network, and even all the way down to the bones, it takes time. That's where the work is done. It's not done in exerting effort. It's done by giving concentrated attention to the target area, breathing into that space, and just hanging out there. Over time, the tissues elongate. We're putting pressure on these deep, deep tissues through tension and compression, and that activates a healing response getting attention that they're not used to getting because, again, the muscles are like bodyguards. The muscles usually support and protect them. Three more breaths here in the spinal twist. Very slowly roll back onto your back. Really take your time, there's no rush at all. Sometimes coming out of it is where you feel the greatest impact of a, a stretch. So let yourself hang out in neutral spine for just a moment. 
listen to the echo of that stretch. And we have one more thing to do on this side before we start taking that whole thing to the other side. So extend your right heel down on the mat and slide it over to the right just a little bit. And then take your left heel, stretch it on the mat and slide it over to the right next to that other one. You can even cross the left ankle over the right. And that may be enough for you to open up through the left hip. But we're going to take Bananasana. So if you'd like to go a little deeper, lift your right arm up overhead and start to draw the left wrist over to the top right corner of the mat. And if you want the right arm to join, it can. But again, if you feel any pinching or tingling sensations, draw the arms back down by your side. So yeah, it's called Bananasana. Do you feel like a banana? My teacher said, it's a very appealing pose. <laughs> Because he's a cornball and I love it. So we're breathing to the left body here, creating a little bit more space with each breath, and then just noticing the compression we're offering into the right side. Both tension and compression offer pressure to the tissues in a way that creates health, healing, and nurturing. You notice the mind wandering, draw it back to a sensation in the body created by the stretch, or bring it back to the respiration where you feel the animation of the breath in the body. Notice if over time the body becomes more or less tense. Give attention to the tight spaces. And take three more breaths here. All right, we begin to come out of this the same way we got into it, by bringing the arm down first, arm or arm, slowly sliding the back body into neutral, or what feels like neutral. We're not worried about aesthetics, just what feels like neutral. Uncross the left ankle from the right and step both feet back into that very first shape that we came into at the beginning of practice. Knees are stacked over ankles, back is flat, rooted into the earth. Just giving a moment to feel the echo of that bananasana. If this is your very first yin class, you may be thinking, what is this? <laughs> exactly what should we want you to ask. We're giving you 75 minutes 
to slow down, slow down and dive right into your experiences and ask yourself, what is that? What is it that I'm feeling? And notice things that escape your awareness during the day because you're so busy. All right, start to windshield wiper those knees again, side to side. Keep the feet separated. You can exaggerate that separation, stepping the feet to the edges of the mat. And then let the knees drift off to the left side. And same option. Slide your feet further away from you, closer. Maybe take the left ankle, cross it over the right knee, if that is sustainable for you. Maybe lift your arms up overhead and start to clasp the, the wrists or the elbows and slide them over to the right. Just a little bit. You don't have to go far to feel something. And then hang out there. Be with this, whatever this is. We get ourselves into shapes that aren't always comfortable because that's where the work needs to be done. And it gives us the tolerance to, 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 to be in a place that doesn't feel 100% right. Now, if it hurts, definitely get out of it. But if it just feels funky, that's what we're after. We want funky. We want funky to turn into something that's fun, something about which you get curious. holding these in shapes and trying to sustain our focus on certain parts of the body or certain parts of the breath also has us confront our tendency to be restless and fidgety. And what if you just settle and be right here? And there's nothing passive about that. It's really just allowing yourself not to resist, releasing tension allowing you to, to explore this experience. Explore this experience for three more deep breaths. If you have the left ankle crossed over the right knee, gently release it. And then slide your right knee over to stack upon your left. Now, if you have, I should have mentioned this on the other side, if you have SI joint dysfunction, and if you have it, you'll know what that is. If you don't know what that is, be grateful because you don't want to have it. It's not very pleasant. But if you do have SI joint dysfunction, roll completely over to your left side with the knee stack and then begin to open your arm up your right arm to the right because that way you'll know what your stopping point is you don't want to encounter pain okay if that doesn't apply to you then just go ahead and come into your twist opening the arms into a goal pose shape or into a t shape maybe the left hand comes to root upon the right knee or maybe even slide your right knee up a little closer so you're staggering the knees just a bit 
You're welcome to put anything that you have between the knees or under the knees. And we're going to hang out right here. We're going to hang out right in our spinal twist for a few minutes. Marinating in the juiciness of this twist. Giving your lumbar spine lots and lots of love. Notice any inner dialogue that may pop up during this experience. Notice the quality of what you say to yourself. Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Allow it to really serve you. And if it doesn't, if you find that it's critical or shameful in any way, then just see if you can let that go and replace it with an inner dialogue that's a little bit more pleasant, a little more positive. You deserve that. And really check in with the animation of breath in this shape. We twist, we cause a lot of constriction, but you can be conscious of that and breathe through it. We've got three more sips of breath here. All right, really take your time coming out of this. That's an intense twist. So slowly bring your feet flat back to the earth and roll your back into neutral. Notice what you notice. <laughs> so up for that. At any point, I mean, you're all muted. If at any point you need to make some moaning or groaning noises, go for it. And then extend your left heel down on the mat, just left leg extend, slide the heel to the left. And then bring the right leg next to it. Maybe think about crossing the right ankle over the left. And just check in, is that enough? If you want more, lift the right arm up and slide it over to the top left corner. Embodying that very appealing banana once again, bananasana. And if you feel like there's any rigidity in the muscles to hold yourself into this, just soften that a little bit. Remember, we don't have to go to the farthest reaches of our banana banana I here. Just a little movement to invite opening into the right side, some tension in the right side of the body, and some compression into the left.
If you notice yourself feeling tired, um, yeah, that's normal. I mean, for one, it's uh, the end of a long weekend and it's getting close to bedtime. But you're also activating your parasympathetic nervous system in these shapes by holding still, by breathing deeply, regulating breath, perhaps, if you're doing some pranayama on your own. So all that's normal. That's why we're practicing before bedtime. Take three more breaths. Each breath is filled with so much love for your body. And that third exhale, bring your right arm down, slide your shoulders over to the center of the mat, really gingerly. Notice the sensations in the spine, something that's trying to get your attention. Uncross your legs, bring your feet flat to the earth once again with the knees bent. The moment in stillness, notice what's there. So we did some love into the spine. We're going to start introducing some love to our hips. And we're going to stay supine for this. And start to lift your feet up. We're going to come into a happy baby shape. Now, you, of course, have the option to make this apanasana rather than happy baby. Apanasana has the knees together and your arms wrap around your shin gently. This is also called wind releasing pose. And again, you're muted. <laughs> so do what you need to do, y'all. It helps with digestion. It can make your stomach feel really good if you're feeling a little bit bloated. But you also have the option of drawing the knees apart, flexing the feet so that your feet are like stamping the sky. And just gently either take a toe bind or edges of the feet, just something really gentle. And again, check in with the muscles and relax them. I'm not muted, so I'm not doing apanasana. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, but I have to maintain some professional decorum here. All right, so you're just relaxing into your hips, offering some Abduction as the, the, the thighs draw apart, deep flexion, feeling the knees draw up toward the armpits or toward the earth. And again, just check in. If you feel like you have a death grip on anything, relax the muscles a little bit. You just need just a tiny bit of pressure into the feet to feel the opening in the hips. Check in with your breath. If you let your mind get distracted by unwholesome thoughts or you start to hold unpleasant dialogue in your head, your breath will respond by getting shallow. Remember the body really craves full respiration here in these yin shapes. We're oxygenating all the cells, getting deep into the tissue.
Notice how this experience is for you. Where can you sense it? Is your mind telling you to run away from anything? You only have three more breaths here. Hang in. But know that you can always come out of a shape sooner than I cue it if you feel the benefits of past. All right, release your bind. Very slowly draw the knees toward one another if they aren't already. And you can either roll to the side and push yourself up or just use your core to roll up into a seated position. So, <laughs> all right. From here, we're gonna do some seated shapes. So I always like to give you the option of, of lifting your hips a little bit. Lifting your hips is a way to be gentle into the hip flexors. It also can provide a little bit of relief into your hamstrings. So let me turn back this way. So we're going to start with a caterpillar shape. If you'd like to lift the hips, lift them slightly. Legs are going to be outstretched in front of you. Now with that said, if you are feeling really tight or tense in the hamstrings, it probably means the hamstrings need a good stretch. So you're going to be grateful for this, maybe on the end of it. You can also slide a pillow or another rolled blanket under your knees. Or if you have hyperextensive um, knees, you might need a little bit extra, in which case you may want to put your heels up on blocks. You get to determine this experience by having the the legs either more narrow or wider. You choose your own adventure for that. And we're going to simply fold. We're going to feel a stretch along the fossil network of the, the back side of the body from the heels the whole way up. We're getting into some spinal flexion here. Now, you also have the option to bring a pillow onto your lap and allow your arms to rest. You can stack your fist so that your forehead has something to catch to catch it. And we're going to be right here. This is where we are. We're going to hold it okay, a minute longer than the other ones we've been holding. Maybe you'll notice the difference in time and maybe not. It just gives you more time to be contemplative and to be reflective of how this experience is unfolding for you. Once again, check in with the muscles, particularly of the legs and the hips. Just make sure that nothing's tensing like it tends to. You want to get way deep down into the tendons here. Get down all the way to the bones.
Stay present for yourself. Stay in this moment. And stay with this shape for three more breaths. You're doing great. And you begin to come out of this by just lifting up into a seated position. And of course, you know, what feels right for you in the in-between time? Does it feel good for you to, to move? Does it feel good for you to just marinate in stillness? You know, what do you need? If ever you need a little counter shape, you know, when, when you flex, the counter would be to extend, offer just a little back bend. Just be gentle that you're not doing anything too aggressive. Just know that these these moments where we're holding shapes in stillness and silence it just create space for you to notice what passes through, what's, what's, what's happening in your own experience that builds the capacity not to react to the thoughts and the memories and the and the dreams and the wishes. Just let them be there, recognizing they're impermanent as they as they come and go. All right, y'all, we're going into our half butterfly here. So we're going to start with the right knee, right hip. So bring your right foot to kiss the inner thigh of your left leg. And once again, you're externally rotating the right hip and you're abducting it, abducting it. You're opening it up. Keep the left leg extended. Always the option to, again, put something underneath the knee or to lift the heel for a little bit of extra. Take a big breath in. And slowly start to walk forward back into a fold. You can keep your palms down to the earth, or maybe you have blocks that frame your knee and your forearms come on down. Just isolating this into, again, some spinal flexion and sensing into the tissues in the back of the left leg. As you hold these shapes for time, you may feel the invitation to go deeper. If that's good for you, go for it. Notice each breath and how it's serving you in the shape.
Enjoy three more breaths here. And start to come up. Bring the spine back in neutral. We're going to turn this into everybody's favorite. We're going to come into a shoelace to the hips. So slide your, if it's accessible for you, slide your right heel over to the left just a little bit, tucking it up underneath your left sit bone. And if it's safe for your knee to, your left knee to do so, lift up your knee, bend it, and stack the left knee over the right. Now, again, this may not be in your practice. It may not be available in your body, in which case you can use something to wedge between the knees to make it more comfortable, or if your knee just can't torque that way, then leave the, the left leg extended. And we're actually going to take a final twist here, and you still know that you're still serving your hips with that right side external rotation. So if you are in your shoelace, you stack the left knee over the right. They have that left hip. We're going to take the right hand <clears throat> onto the left knee. And just very gently twist to the left. Now, you don't have to hear all the bones creaking and cracking. You don't have to, you know, make it like a chiropractic visit. Just a very gentle, easing into this twist. You have options here, of course. Always options. One of which is to bring your left ear down to your left shoulder giving the neck a little bit of attention. You can also bend your left arm and bring the back of the hand up against your shoulder blade to you also give attention to your left shoulder. Remember that this is about twisting. So if any of that takes you out of the twist or compromises the sensation of the twist, then just come right back and keep it simple. I very much want this experience to be personalized for you, and I want it to be about you, but I do just need to share a little story. I know I don't need to sell yen to you because you chose this class. You're here for a reason. But last week, I was walking a dog that, that lived with us. It's not our dog. We're not really fostering. It just lives with us. It's a long story. But it's a wonderful dog that's a big dog, a strong dog that gets very excited when he sees other puppies. And I was doing everything I could to control him in a particular moment when he saw two dogs and he ended up controlling me and, and pulled me down um, pretty hard. And I crashed onto my knees and then just fell, you know, on my side. And in that moment, I thought, uh-oh, this is bad. <laughs> but you, after I took a little Advil and went to sleep that night, I woke up the next day and I couldn't believe what a miracle it was that I wasn't injured any more than just a little bit of sore kneecap. It was an injury that I um, had happened to my husband or any, any some other people that I know would have caused fractures or maybe ACL tears or something more serious. But I really, really credit yoga, particularly yin yoga and the health of my joints and ligaments and tendons and the whole network of tissues in my body that support bones. For, for keeping me healthy. Um, yay, yoga heels. So that's all to say. I hope you continue to practice with us here. That's a delight to have you tonight. Know that you're doing your body good. Three more breaths here in your twist. Slowly come out of the twist. Let that be the first thing you do. And then slowly release the legs. 
come back into extended leg shape, little snack pose here. If it feels okay, maybe you shake them just a little bit. You don't want to excite the muscles too much, but just a little bit. All right, and then from here, we're going to take half butterfly on the other side. So bend your left knee, externally rotating that hip, placing the foot up against your right thigh. Deciding if you'd like to bring something on which you land. And when you're ready, slowly walk the hands forward. Invite that curve into the spine as you lean forward. Leaning into this experience. And to make sure that your quads, just a really incredibly strong, active cluster of muscles in your upper leg, make sure they're relaxed here. Enjoy three more breaths right here. And then when you are ready, begin to come back into your seated position, lifting the spine. And then tuck your left heel under your right sit bone. And if it works for your body, stack your right knee over the left with the supportive prop. So once you arrive, we begin to find our twist. Left hand just pressing upon the knee. Right hand behind you. With those same options, to drape the left, I'm sorry, the right ear to the right shoulder, and or bringing the back of the right hand up against the shoulder blade. Melting everything right into this moment, being fully present for everything you notice.
Enjoy three more breaths right here, right in this moment, not wishing to be anywhere else or doing anything else. And then slowly start to come back to neutral. We're going to take one more caterpillar. So go ahead and extend your legs out. He's a little bit side to side, your choice. Now, if you'd rather take a full butterfly instead, continuing to work on that hip abduction and the rotation, that's fine. Or you can come back into caterpillar. Sometimes it's helpful to repeat a shape to see if there's, you know, again, an invitation to go deeper, or maybe just that second greeting of a shape is what unlocks the door. So when you're ready, like they're extended, maybe you bring the bolster back into play or not, and just melt right into this forward fold. In with where you feel the animation of that breath, purely through the back body here. And you soften just a little bit more in and around this experience. Maybe with the help of your breath. There are three more breaths left for you here. And we'll slowly begin to peel it out of this. Take your time. Reacclimating your spine to neutral. Got one more shape before Shavasana. Thank it. It's fun to our back. Doing a bridge pose. So many options here. One is just have your back flat to the earth yet again. That may be enough for you. Another is slide something underneath your sacrum. So make sure it's not on your lumbar curve, it's south. Like keep going, keep going down below your waistband. If you're using blocks, I encourage you to put it on the flat setting. And if you need more, put another block on top of that or a blanket on top of that. Rather than having it be on the medium height, this is kind of stable and you're gonna, you're gonna start 
engaging, contracting into your muscles to keep you from falling. And that's going to defeat the purpose of our stretch here. So lift the hips, slide something under your sacrum, and just feel the rooting. If you want a little bit more in this final now extension, you can extend the legs out in front of you. Decide what is best for you. You have three minutes here. The secret's up. <laughs> I told you how long you'll be here. Maybe that brings you relief. Maybe allow yourself to be here now, breathing into this experience. Savor these last three breaths of your supported bridge pose. If your legs are extended, very gently bend them. So your feet can root down just enough to lift up the hips and remove your prop. Bring yourself back down to neutral spine, sensing any shifts in the body. And then we're gonna come right into our final rest of asana. You wanna take a traditional corpse pose, legs extend out in front of you. Maybe you slide some prop underneath your knees so that your lumbar spine can root down even heavier into the earth. Maybe you'd like to roll over to one side. Good news is you get to do whatever you want to do. I'll keep the time and I'll let you know when it's time to come up to a seated shape. But for now, just melt into the beautiful blessing of being exactly who and how you are in this moment.
the breath and the mind are two sides of the same coin, like a duo of swimming fish where one goes, the other follows. The breath and the mind unite and enter into each other. These winds of energy can be felt in two directions. Prana moves in and up and is expansive, and apana moves down and out through the body. To experience these flows, take a long, slow breath in as if you are pulling the energy from the earth right into your core, up into your brain. Feel the expansion arise. As you breathe out, pay tribute to the power of the sky drawing the energy down your body and out. Inspiration from Gabrielle Harris. So with the next breath, start to stretch the body. And eventually roll gently onto one side of the body. Using as little effort and energy and engagement as possible, come up to a seated position, sensing the body rooted down once again. And Press together in front of the heart center. Feeling the animation of breath fill up into your belly, way up into your heart, and letting it go. Thank you so much for practicing Yummy Yin. I hope it feels delicious, and I hope you're ready for a really nice, restful sleep. Namaste. Again, my name is Erin, and I come to you thanks to the National Landing Bid. And if you want to check out other events I have coming up, yoga events, some are free, some are for a very low nominal fee, eatyogadrink.com is where you can find me. So check it out, and I look forward to seeing you all again. Thanks so much for practicing with us tonight.